New Year, same trucks. All of that coming up next right here on Sax Out Racing, right here on Twitch.tv, the V8 Super Truck Championship, next. And a good afternoon to everybody out there. My name is Cisco Scaramuza, and welcome to the 2019 Sax Out Racing V8 Super Truck World Championship, live from Sao Paulo, Brazil, right here on twitch.tv slash Racing. Of course, my partner in crime here, Paul Smith, gonna be helping us call all the action as well as bring you all the cameras and graphics today. But Paul, it was a little, it's been a bit of a throwback day for us here at Race Spot TV this morning. Jake and I did four hours of Nurburgring, and now you and I get to sit back and watch some trucks drive on some road courses. Hashtag throwback day here on Race Spot, but it's not a throwback because it's 2019. It's all new seasons, and we're getting ready for a barn burner of a race here. Oh, I'm really looking forward to this. The V8 Super Truck Series, brought to you by Socks Out Racing, is one of the highlights of the eSports calendar, in my opinion. Absolutely fantastic racing we're going to see once again. And the names just keep on coming to this series. I'm really pumped for this, and uh, it's going to be a great show. Absolutely, and it's it's been a little while for me. I mean, after uh, after a little bit of a brief hiatus, it is great to be back in the commentary booth for this race. Let's talk about the weather right now on track as drivers continuing to make their qualifying runs right now, and we'll bring you that weather brought to you by AccuWeather, the official weather partner of Sax Out Racing and the V8 Super Truck World Championship. Right now, it's mostly cloudy, 88 degrees Fahrenheit. The track is at a toasty 105 degrees as well. The wind's coming from the southeast, 8 miles an hour. And uh, the immunity, oh, about 58% or so right there. You see all the stats on there. And, well, right there, there's the stats that we're going to be looking for for this race. 24 laps, 64 miles. Of course, 15 turns on this 2.62-mile road course that has seen the likes of Formula One stars, British stock car stars, and, of course, a time or two here, the stars of the V8 Super Truck Championship. And what makes this what makes this road course so fantastic, Paul? Thank you. 
Yeah, he absolutely is right now. The driver of the number 83, the driver, the newly recruited driver, obviously right now sporting the VRS Coanda Sim Sport paint scheme, but also keep in mind that driver for the newly drafted Joe Gibbs Racing over on the E-NASCAR Pecani Free Series side. Of course, has had a lot of success and looking to have a successful season this year in 2019, repping the, uh, the Toyota brand as he's doing so out here on the racetrack right now. But it's road time, so that means he's got the purple and orange and familiar colors for him as well as he comes across the start finish line to drop his first time on us here we'll see what he does third on the chart it's gonna go bobby zelensky there with the time of 134.63 so a great run for him out of that 83 truck stable but a lot of familiar names for those of you who have stuck with us here in this v8 super truck championship for those of you who are new well we'll run you through some of the names that i think paul and i are looking looking out for doc stout one of the uh one of the main drivers here that we've seen time in and time out eric blixt sven kamertz as well dallas pataska a name that jumps out to me 5400 i rating on that side he knows how to get it done in these uh nascar styled trucks and uh, other vehicles of the sort so he's definitely going to be a threat out there we're watching thomas o'leary out of the radicals online stable and uh, of course radicals known to feel field many successful trucks here at sor and doing so thusly thomas o'leary working his way around the circuit right now yeah radicals they've, they've got a couple of teams here really looking uh looking a strong outfit they've shown a good turn of pace and of course their champion from last season marco mogren uh, he's a Radicals driver. I don't actually see him here today, unfortunately. So he's not starting off the defense of his title very well. He's going to have to take this as a drop round then. As Thomas O'Leary, we're looking at him at the moment. He's coming around uh, Bicca de Pato and heading through the left-hander here towards uh, the final corner. Well, the final proper corner of Junkau left-hander and it's important to carry the speed on the exit of this because it's uphill it's a steep uphill and you're flat out all the way up there so we'll see if Thomas O'Leary can put a lap time in time running out for drivers but I will say look at those top two four thousandths of a second covering those two as O'Leary across the line what will he do and it is fourth place for Thomas O'Leary absolutely and uh Decent run, but uh, just interesting to note here, Paul, that we have that gap right there of about three drivers, Zelensky, O'Leary, and Blix, who are all within that six-tenth of a second off the leader. Then you had Sven Kamertz, who was only four one-thousandths of a second off Dallas Pataska's pull time here. So that's really cool to see, as right now the only driver left on track who's even uh, running around at this point looks like to be David Williams. Yes, he is out on track trying to finish off his qualifying time. About a minute 20 left to go. He should be able to finish this lap off. Uh, I don't know if he's actually on a lap, though. That's the thing. He's going to be pushed for time. The other driver out of that VRS stable, by the way, you can yeah. see the orange and the purple on that truck. He's going to flash across the line here. I'm wondering if he's not being scored because there we go. Now scoring is going to kick in for him. I don't think he's going to manage to make a lap, dude. No, it's, it's way too late. I think this is just a little bit of last minute practice, maybe having a few little issues. And uh, he's having to just, uh, just run some uh, laps and get a bit of feeling in that truck so uh, yeah not ideal to be starting from the back maybe he's going for the hard charger award maybe that's what he's going for that's something we haven't mentioned on this broadcast so far is the hard charger award little change this year and instead it's going to be the person who gains the most positions who wins that hard charger award now that could be, you say, start in sixth place, move up to sixth by the end of the results. That's a plus of six positions. However, say you started, uh, say, third and dropped down to 13th and then came back to, say, fifth, that's going to be a greater gain in positions. So uh, it's worth keeping an eye out of that. We'll try and keep a bridge of everything that's happening with that. But uh, with that, we're going to be uh, getting ready for the starting grid here. Absolutely. We'll run you through who's starting where here at Interlagos, also known as Ho Jose Carlos Pace, the Autodromo right here in Sao Paulo, Brazil. 
Dallas Patasca for Radicals Online. Going to start on pole. Radicals Online also going to grab second spot to Sven Kamertz. VRS Coanda Sim Sports. Bobby Zelensky going to start third. Fourth is going to go to the other Radicals Online turn racing car of Thomas O'Leary. Fifth is going to be the driver of Eric Blix out of that uh, Lempels Racing number 89. Smith Esports. That's Aaron Smith the second. Hey, I know him from Podium Competition. He's going to start 6th, 7th. It's going to be James Keaton, who uh, is a privateer in this series, though, out of that TBR stable, Team Bush Frank Racing. And Paul Slavonic is going to start 8th, another one of those privateers. Absolutely. Ninth is going to go. Oh, oh sorry, go ahead. Say, I'll jump in here. It's Chris Pennell, ninth place for Illusion Motorsport. Danny Solo, Go Team Racing, ran out the top 10 with Steve Seals at Steve Sealstad. I apologize, Steve. I will get that wrong a few more times in 11th. Michael Skerlock in 12th place with Doc Stout 13th. Martin Kapal, another Lempel's driver, down in 14th and 15th for Aspen Belvin in the Buck Jones Racing Squad. And look at that, David Williams for VRS from the Sims Force and Stephen Dega Jr. both not setting a qualifying lap. 17 drivers here, Cisco, a good sized grid, and it's going to be some, uh, promises to be some really good racing. So those, they're lining up. I believe that's right before uh, Ferradura right now lining up the rest of this uh, grid here is they're going to finish what is basically half a pace lap here around Sao Paulo. And they'll take the green flag from there. And interesting note to kind of look at the brand differences of these vehicles right now. You take a look. It's a pair of Toyotas on the front, a pair of Toyotas in the second row. And then finally, you start to see a Chevrolet, a bow tie. They're starting in that, 80, that 89 Eric Blix. The fifth place starter as well, the 23. That's a bow tie right there for James King as well as Paul Slavnik. And then back to uh, some more Toyotas as well. So not a lot of bow ties out here, but they're looking to try and uh, break the Toyota stranglehold a little bit, which, like we said, keep in mind, keep an eye on that Bobby Zelensky guy. Obviously working with a little bit more resources than uh, some of the other seasons that he's had previously. But the uh, entire field lined up behind the rough RT 12-hour pace car. It's going to be a lot of fun, Paul. Yeah, um, and, uh, well, it's going to be an interesting one. Going to be interesting to see how these drivers do. Of course, different drivers, new drivers to the series. You're learning how each of these drivers uh, compete, how aggressive people are. So it's going to be a bit of a feeling out process to start with. Uh, in this opening round and don't forget mandatory tire pit stops in the middle third of the race however if they need to take a service for repairs before or after that uh, pit stop window you are not allowed to change tires they have to keep an eye on those tires here we'll see how that all factors into the race here but the pace car getting ready to drop and the 2019 socks out racing V8 Super Truck World Championship gets it set to kick off here from Sao Paulo, Brazil. The pace car leading the field around the final bend here at Interlagos. There it goes down to pit road. The field in control of Dallas Patascas. The green flag's in the air. We're racing here from Interlagos. Great run now. They're going to go three wide already. Zelensky going to stick the nose in there under Patasca. Not going to happen this time, though. The uh, iRacing style truck going to head out in front as uh, actually, no, that's the uh, other car. There we go. Paint scheme's loading in for me there. Patasca going to take the lead right now as they go single file. The first battle is side by side. That's Aaron Smith in the 70 going at it with the 23 of James King as they fly on the brakes here into uh, Decida Del Lago. Yeah, and it's side by side on the exit of Descender de Lago. Then it's King who's going to be in that sixth place, still battling going on further back as well. Through Ferradura for the first time, tricky corner, so easy to lose the back end, and straight away on the brakes into uh, the right hander here. Look at how close the 13 of Danny Solo and the 88 of Paul uh, Slavin, sorry, uh, as it's going through this tight section. Great racing. No oh, big drama so far. We are only uh, a third, two thirds of the way through uh, the lap, so uh, anything can happen here in this one as they're going into a Shukau. For the first time, as David Williams now, he can start making some places. He's made it to the places already as well. 
Yeah, David Williams already trying to become the biggest mover on the day, and he is very much in the position to do so as uh, they come up through the uh, through the final corner here, going to cross the start finish line. And here, I'm hoping we'll start to see some data come across the screen here eventually. But uh, Dallas Potaska continuing to lead the field, the 66. Meanwhile, back in the second, Sven Kamertz right now doing what Sven Kamertz does as uh, Bobby Zelensky right now running in his coattails right there on third. So all three drivers starting to break away. You start to see the gap kind of open up a little bit. Thomas O'Leary running fourth, as well as Eric Blix still in that fifth position right where he started. All the drivers right now running around the field here. It's pretty similar to where they started. You're battling though, it's really about Pulse uh, Slavenik on back, Danny Solo, uh, Michael Skurlock as well, kind of that whole mess of trucks. And then of course, David Williams flying his way through the field right now. Up to, that should be 11th now that he just ticked off. And uh, looking for more here, is that driver out of VRS? Yeah, he's, uh, he's certainly pushing, he's certainly in the positions. And his next target is Dennis Solo. And then looking the way through here, trying to, uh, to get this, uh, these trucks. As it feel tricky section, as we were mentioning, to lose control of the trucks heading towards the end of the lap here and Williams just patiently wait for his time for the opportunity to get a move done. But so far, single file traffic as they're heading up towards the end of the lap. Yeah, and uh, David Williams, like we said, has done a fantastic job working his way through this field thus far. But the field in control right now. Dallas Potaska trying to open that gap up on the rest of the field and uh, doing an excellent job of it right now as he comes to complete lap number two on to lap number three we go. And uh, right now, I, the man on the mission, obviously, has been David Williams as he starts to work on the, uh, the 13 right now, Danny Solo, and uh, looking to try and get his run on him as they oh. head down the main street. Back, oh, problems. Uh, yeah, it's the 84. And uh, uh, he's had an issue then. Aspen Melvin will get a replay up on the screen there. I think it's just going to be a solo spin for him. Down into turn one, the center S. Oh, yeah, just carried a little bit too much speed. No contact with anybody else. Harmless, back out and running, but down to the last place, unfortunately. Yeah, he was able, luckily, no contact for the driver of the 84, but like you said, a little bit too much speed, Paul, going into that first curve and then the Senna S complex, and after that, it was just a uh, disaster for him. So he's going to have to pick up the pieces here and start to work his way back through this field. David Williams, meanwhile, still right on the back bumper of the 13 as uh, they start to close in here. They come around Cotavello right now, heading down the hill now as we head towards Junkau as he's, yep, thank you very much. That's 10th position for David Williams, so add him plus one. That's six spots that he's made so far. We're only three laps going to complete the third lap this time. Yeah, as um, up the hill they go once again, so Williams' next target now is Paul Slavnovich. Oh my goodness, Slavnovich. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get it, we'll get it. I really am sorry. It's been one of those days today. We've had a lot of things going on in the background. Uh, but there he is. He's a privateer, so he's on his own. Unfortunately for him, but he's not that far behind the battle in front, which is Chris Pennell and Aaron Smith second. As they're coming through down towards the Cena de Lago, and they're going to come side by side here. Pennell. Looking to make a move into the center of the locker. Thank you very much. That's a 92, 57. Yeah, Brunel does a great job for Smith to fall back a little bit. And so, meanwhile, we're watching all this battling taking place. Do you want to say hello to everybody out there in Twitch land here? A lot of fans uh, cheering for uh, Danny out there as well, looking to see where he is right now, running 12. So remember, he lost that spot to David Williams. Also, uh, Michael Skurlock's gotten back by him. But the 13, he's got a couple fans out there on Twitch. So awesome to see, as well as you look at the top of your screen. If you want to follow along all the timing, follow along. Maybe you're a big fan of Danny. You want to see where he is on the racetrack, racebot TV forward slash timing. That's where you can go to follow along there. As uh, looks like most of our uh, most of our viewers tonight have come from Danny's uh, Discord channel, so go figure. Thank you, Danny, <laughs> for uh, shouting us out and giving us a ton of viewers. Also, the host by Podium Esports, which of course is me. So, thank you very much for that. As a uh, couple couple people coming in oh. here, and uh, 
Yep, problem uh, is well, possibly William. 63. Well, the Will oh, Williams has not made his way past here. Uh, and uh, now his next target is Aaron Smith the second, and he's pushing hard here to uh, get that position now. So he's working his way through the field. And if we look to the, uh, to the left of the screen, you'll see that seven positions gained by, Danny, uh, Danny, by David Williams. So a great start for him, yeah. but he didn't, he didn't really start in the place where he wanted to be. No, definitely not, but I think that was of his own volition. Hello, David Williams is able to skate around Aaron Smith. I don't think that's the way he wanted to grab that position, but nonetheless does so. David Williams flying through the field, drifts past Aaron Smith. I think he kept the water in the cup for that one. As oh, meanwhile, Bapley. Stephen Dager... Bapley, yeah, second absolutely. place. Sven Kermat to Bobby Zelensky. They're, they're restarting their battle from last season. This is going to be fantastic then to see these two duke it out. Now all of this is meaning that Dallas is able to just pull away in the lead at the moment. So uh, yeah, this is going to be interesting to see how Zelensky copes with uh, Sven Kermat because he found out last year he is a tricky customer in this truck now. Yeah, absolutely. Zelensky right on the back bumper of Sven Kamerts. It's a rivalry that spanned multiple seasons here at Sox Out Racing. As Zelensky right in the tire tracks of the six sideways machine right in front of him. You can, you can tell it's that truck because, well, it has it on the spoiler. So that makes it a little bit easier. As they cross the line here to complete lap number five onto lap number six. As there's the dive bomb. Zelensky get to stick the nose in. Here we go. First passing attempt, not going to work there, though. Zelensky get a drop back oh. in line. Kamerts gets loose, and now Zelensky has a run as they come out of Curva del Sol and right onto the straightaway. Yeah, but he didn't get the run that he wanted through there, and all this slowing each other up as well. Thomas O'Leary to catch up. So, uh, Thomas, teammate of Sven for this season. Zelensky down the inside. A little rub of paint there between the two of them, but they've made it through. And Thomas O'Leary now is going to make the move on his teammate as well. So, Sven Kemmert's possible losing two positions, but he's holding back his Thomas. He's letting Sven stay ahead. As our colleague Jake Sperry would say, that was a little bit of argy pargy there as uh, Bobby Zelensky fired it in, a little bit of a dive bomb there on Cambridge. But I think Zelensky knows that the longer that Potaska is allowed to just sit there and drive away from the field, the longer it's going to take for Zelensky to be able to reel him back in. Both those drivers uh, above the 5,000 I rating mark, they know what they're doing out there on the racetrack. And uh, Potaska, meanwhile, just putting a hurting on the field right now as we uh, tap back and let's check in on everybody's favorite mover and shaker, David Williams, who's right now now on the back bumper of his next victim is uh, Chris Burnell in that 92. Yeah, we couldn't actually see him. He was that close behind uh, on that camera shot. Oh, look at that. I just saw that. That's awesome. Yeah, so as he's coming up the hill now, we're on the bumper here of David Williams. RS Coranda Sim Spot driver, the number 81. He pushes the the uh, the limit of the pantry line. Interesting note, just to uh, make everyone aware, as he goes down the inside, that's going to be up in seventh place then for David Williams. Great little outbreaking maneuver into turn one. But interesting note, just as I mentioned it, that pantry line you cannot cross that at any time in this race. So uh, you've got to stay to the right hand side of that line if you're staying out on track. Or else you go on the naughty step, right? That's how it works. Yeah, St Stephen Burbage, series admin, will come and uh, have a very stern word with you. Yeah, it's uh, you don't want to have a stern word with uh, Stephen because he will be mad at you. And probably Nash will probably be mad at you too. There's a bunch of people, John Medeiros as well probably would be mad. Lots of mad officials don't, don't do it. Don't cross oh. the line. Uh, battling further down, Danny Solo and Matt Kapal. Kapal, a lot bit further down than we used to uh, seeing him in that Lempel's car. But a uh, car, a truck. And uh, I'll tell you what, he's putting the pressure on Danny Solo though. As they're coming through this middle sector, and Solo, not the best run out in the corner. They're going to be side by side. And there's going to be Kapal around the outside, surely not. No, yeah. Now he's going to stay even now as they come down the hill towards Jun Kao. And uh, right now the inside line going to favor Kapal. Is now hard on the brakes into Jun Kao. The truck's going to get a little bit loose. And Solo's going to say thank you very much. He'll cross him over. Thank you very much. Up the hill he goes. And just like that, Danny Solo gets his spot back. Yeah, that was always going to happen there. Going that deep into Jun Kao. 
and uh, Kapal really struggling because he get that truck stopped. It doesn't seem to be favouring him here today, and it just looks a little bit uh, loose, does that truck. Might want to change something in the pit stop on the solar. Runs deep into turn one, so both drivers just appear to be struggling, slowing these trucks down here. Battle Royale right now between these two. Solo going to lose that position, but now get the draft out of Curvadol. So might try something into Decida, uh, Decida Del Lago if he, dri if he dares anyway. He's going to get right back up to the back bumper, though, of Kapal. Not going to happen this time, though. So as they head to the interior section of the racetrack towards Ferradura, as it sits right now, Solo can tend to just ride at the moment. And I think if you're Solo, seeing how Kapal's driven thus far, Paul, Maybe force him into a mistake. Don't try and make a dumb pass or anything like that. Just sit behind and apply pressure. It's just up ahead of those guys. Aaron Smith took a little off-track excursion back on the racetrack, though. He lost that spot to Michael Skurlock. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll just have a look back at that. Just um, We've caught the end of that, unfortunately. So here he is, Aaron Smith, the second, running wide. Oh, didn't want to get into the back of uh, Slavnev uh, Slavovi. Slavnik. I'll get there. Um, by round 12 I'll get there uh, but um, Aaron Smith yeah, just decided to get out of it jump out the way thought the sensible thing which is rare for a racing driver to think the sensible thing and to uh, avoid any contact with the rear of that truck well I will tell you having seen Aaron uh, compete a little bit on my side of things Aaron is one of those drivers he doesn't have the highest die rating in the world but he's a smart driver and showing that here today is that driver of the 70s so keep an eye on that race truck here is him kind of getting out of the way means we have a little bit of a battle forming between the 88 and the 93 so your favorite driver in the world paul <laughs> paul slavinik right now is going to have to go into defensive mode against michael skurlock here as they head back town back towards decida de lago yeah down into the braking zone we're on board then with skurlock looking forward half a second between the two of them it's all about just patience here. You don't want to use up your tyres too much because even though it's, what, 88 degrees Fahrenheit in the air, that track temperature, it was, what, 106 degrees, I think it was, at the start of this race. So really, really hot conditions. These tyres, these Goodyear's, will struggle with those hot conditions after a while. Yeah, the Goodyear Eagles on these race trucks as the track's cooled a little bit. That's a tap right there. That did not go the way he wanted it to up at the top of the hairpin there at Cotavello as they head back down the hill towards Juncao once again. They come around this left sweeper. Yes, it is a hot day out there. The track temperature is starting to come back up once again here on the AccuWeather stat uh, weather tracker as they uh, come back up the hill now the pit window is open by the way Paul that mandatory pit window from lap 8 lap 8 to lap 16 is wide open so if you want a short pit just make sure you can make it on fuel and uh, that well, you gotta think okay. with how track it is with how hot it is Paul you have to come down for tires as soon as you can well you say that but um, do you want to save the fresher tires for later in the race and make a push right at the end as David Williams, by the way, has made it past James King now. So that's up another position. And uh, we've already got one guy in the pits. That's uh, Doc Stout onto pit road. So that's the uh, privateer. Uh, there's also uh, Stephen Dager Jr. on pit road and has been on there for almost 10 minutes now with a damaged truck. Unfortunately, we didn't catch up with uh, what happened to uh, Stephen there. Uh, we'll have to see if we can maybe try and find that at the end of this race. Yeah, so what happened, I'll, I'll walk oh, you through yeah. basic what happened, Paul, was cause coming out of the uh, Senna S and through Curva del Sol, that truck actually broke a little bit loose. He caught the curb on the inside. It was kind of all by his lonesome. Came out, hit the DRS, or about hit the DRS sign, then piled it into the Anko barrier down the straightaway. And uh, the only two words out of the radio of the uh, number 63, motor shot. So he's done for uh, right now. Don't think he's going to get that engine repaired as we start to watch the battle between the teammates, Sven Kamerts and Thomas O'Leary. Well, I don't think it's going to be much of a battle, unfortunately, for us as uh, the two Radicals Online turn racing drivers are uh, a line of stern. They'll be wanting to work together here using the draft to try and pull themselves towards Bobby Zelensky, who has actually pulled away about second and a half from uh, Sven Kamerts now. But that lead is now 4.4 seconds out front. It's incredible how much that Dallas uh, Petaska 
has been able to pull out here on Bobby Zelensky and uh, Radicals Online JRT, that's the other uh, the other Radicals team, they are uh, going to be happy with that considering that Marco Mogren is not here for this event. Good way to start off the season to have your team truck out front even if your other driver can't make it. Keep in mind though, I believe, Paul, correct me if I'm wrong, they do have a drop available yeah. in the championship if they need it. Yeah, yeah, they do. So uh, it's not the end of the world if you do this an event, but really you want to give yourselves the, uh, the best opportunity to, to try and uh, uh, get as many good scores as you possibly can. As uh, really the closest battle on track is really a battle between two teammates. We have still got a three-way battle for 9th, 10th and 11th as well, but we're not really close enough to be making any moves at the moment. Maybe those pit stops will become crucial. I'm looking at pit stop times, which by the way, if you want to keep up with today with pit stops, racebot.tv forward slash timing, you'll see the uh, pit stop times there. 15.1 seconds for Doc Stout, 14.6 seconds for Steve uh, Sealstad. So that just shows a lot of difference in hitting your marks right in that uh, pit stop time. Yeah, you absolutely can make a difference here, and you have that super long pit road entry, but as you mentioned, Paul, you got to watch out for that line, as now one of those drivers going to hit pit road. It's going to be uh, Michael Skurlock there, that number 93 clipped a little bit of the line. I think that's kosher, but he's going to hit pit road now it's into the commitment cone. Also, James King, the 23 as well, hitting pit road. Both those drivers pulling into their stalls here. A very weird pit road because of just how these stalls are laid out. You have the lines there. It's really hard to see them though, Paul. You have to rely on that pit crew that you're coming towards to uh, be able to find that just because of how dirty and uh, rubber covered this pit road, those pit boxes really are. Yeah, so James King came in as well at the same time. 14 second pit stop for him, Skirlock. 13.9 seconds. Dennis Solo also on pit road. 13.8 seconds. So the times are getting quicker here on pit road. So the, uh, the pit crew is obviously getting a bit of practice and these drivers getting a bit of practice coming into their pit stall. Now if you're the two radicals turn, uh, online turn racing team drivers who are line the stern, surely because they qualified together you want to separate their, their pit stops by a lap because it's going to get a little bit tricky to see where your pit man is if you put a teammate right in front of you. And it would, no, actually not necessarily because uh, Thomas O'Leary going to grab the fourth pit stall here and uh, Sven Kamerts going to grab the second Zelensky pit in. stall. But no, Zelensky, and they are going to split it up. Kamerts is going to hit pit road. O'Leary stays out, so they are going to split it up by one lap. So Zelensky in. Uh, Kamerts in. Those are your two out of that lead five or so. Also, Eric Blixt actually as well going to come down pit road, as will David Williams. So the two VRS teammates going to come down pit road, as well as Chris Purnell as well in that 92. So everybody hitting pit road now. That opportunity, oh, I think... Blixt missed his pit stall. Had to reverse there. That's going to cost him a second or two. So yeah, Will, he'll have to back up in that stall, which I'll, it's simple enough, just throw the truck in reverse, but it will cost you those valuable seconds. And as Zelensky comes out of pit road, hits the curb, and uh, is coming right out. Oh, Sven Kavert's just got a piece of the exit ramp there on the outside. The Onco barrier just got a piece of it. But I tell you what, Kevin's pit stop, 13.1 seconds compared to Bobby Zelensky's 14.5. That's 1.4 seconds quicker than Zelensky actually in his pit stall. So a great stop from Sven there. Still got four drivers who have yet to come onto pit road. Dallas Pataska, Thomas O'Leary, uh, Paul Slam, uh, Slavnovic. Uh, Slavnovic. I'll get there eventually. Slavonic. Slavonic. Yeah, I've Slava got to slow Nick. down. That's what it is. I'm trying yeah. too fast. Uh, and that's been Bev Belvin as well. All have yet to pit for us here today. And in fact, let's have a look at your leader. He's on heading on down to pit road right now. Yep, the uh, JRT entry going to hit pit road. And there's the commitment cones. Bang, right there. Now he's on the pit lane looking for his box. Box number one for the driver of the 19. Also going to look back and see if Thomas O'Leary going to hit pit road. Yes, he will. Cross the commitment cone there. And then Paul Slavonic, one of the last drivers 
that we're waiting on. Yep, here he comes. He's going to hit pit road. That means the last driver to not hit pit road yet is going to be Aspen Velvin in that 84 truck. Remember, he ran into issues, had that spin out there, and uh, is still on track here trying to make up a little bit of time. But four tires and fuel there for uh, Dallas Potaska. 13-7 by the crew in the box. Fantastic pit stop. And then Sven Kamer, also keep in mind, has had the fastest pit stop of any of the drivers all day just from a pit crew alone a 13.5 but Pataska made it up on pit road a 29.4 overall the quickest we've seen overall on pit road all day yeah absolutely uh, fantastic to see that we've got a little bit of an interesting battle potentially coming on here so you got Eric Blix, James King and David Williams all together now King pitted a lap earlier than Blitz and Williams, so his tyres are going to be one lap older. You may not think that that will affect them too much, but in this weather and these, um, these temperatures, it could potentially cost him towards the end of this race. And uh, so, just to see how that one goes, although Williams is just looking imperious there, he um, is just gaining all the time, gaining positions. He's in that P7 at the moment. He's looking all over the back of King's truck in P6. Yeah, and one thing to note is we take a look at that AccuWeather weather report once again. The track's starting to heat up a little bit. It's now 109 for the track surface, so the surface temperature has gone back up. Though we are seeing a little bit of shade over here in Junkau right now, so that surface could be a little bit cooler. You see the track temp, though, kind of hovering around that 108-109 mark so interesting to watch here as it is about 3 30 right now in some time here local so uh still kind of middle of the day esque but uh luckily i think for these guys the track gonna cool off here as the time continues to click by as it's to one does williams no he's not he's showing his nose he's showing his intention he thought about it but the thing is the further up the grid you go the quicker these drivers are the harder it's going to be to make those positions in this race and don't forget also you mentioned about the temperature track temperature changing all the time as here comes Williams again I'll make the point in a second looking to the inside hard onto the brakes they're gonna go side by side through the center de Lago and, and uh, King just having to take it a little bit wider and loses that position to Williams through that turn four and five section but the point I was gonna make is this is the first time the Soptap Racing V8 Super Trucks World Championship has taken place with the dynamic weather, with the, the, the shade of clouds coming over, the iRacing uh, update that came back in back in December now, wasn't it? Yep. And uh, that, that update that they did with the dynamic weather is really starting to, to play effect. What's the time of the day? Uh, change as well so uh, this is the first time these guys have been able to race this series with that change in the uh, iRacing service. And to talk about that just a bit longer Paul keep in mind we saw that cloud cover that actually brought the track temperature back down to about 103 102 degrees Fahrenheit for that in American I don't know what that is in Celsius offhand um, but nonetheless it's track starting to cool off. It's getting a little bit nicer out there. Is the leader going to take nine laps to go this time? Dallas Potaska still very much in command of the field. 3.6 seconds over Bobby Zelensky, Sven Kamertz, and Thomas O'Leary, as, as well as Eric Blixton, fifth, who got a little bit drifty there going through the corner. And by the way, while we were talking about time of day, David Williams just decided, guys, come on, I'm trying to fly through the field here. you got to keep up with me. He grabbed six away from James King. Yeah, we saw that uh, happen then. And uh, Williams' next target is the man on the screen, Eric Blix, the 89 Lempels Racing. Been a bit of a mixed day for Lempels so far. Eric Blix doing well up in fifth place, but Matt Kapal down in 12th place. We won't be happy with that today. Six seconds adrift of Paul Slavonic, and uh, really, it's, it's been a tough day for Kapal. He's been battling Danny Solo all the way through this race and they're still pretty close together we'll focus on this battle then between Blix and Williams for fifth place in this race yeah so this will be the final spot of your top five as Williams in the tire tracks as they head down the hill now towards I believe this is going to be Junkau yes it is so down hard into this corner here a 105 and now back all the way up on the power once again up the hill 
towards uh, towards the final corner here in that final kind of short shoot onto the main start finish straight. And you can see just off in the distance there is Thomas O'Leary. Don't know if David's going to have enough time to catch him, but certainly all over the back and uh, in the rear view mirror right now of Eric Blix, who we saw get a little bit loose through the sun ass last time. A little bit deep into the breaking point that time. That truck didn't look too low down as now they come through the sun ass, through Curva do Sol, and onto the long straightaway here, the Red Oposta. As they'll head back towards uh, Desidas El Sol. It's, it's not too bad if you, if you go in a little bit deep into the, the left-hander at the center S because you want to take a later apex anyway because it means it brings you up to the left-hand side of the track ready to give you better wider entry into the right-hander going into Curva de Sol. So it's not too bad, but you don't, also don't want to miss an apex. And he didn't do that on the Williams now within half a second of his rival in the 89 truck. For your information, you may have seen it pop up at the top Bob, of the screen. Is. What a bump. Williams letting him know he's there. Uh, you may have noticed it at the top of the screen uh, about a minute ago. But uh, Dallas set the fastest lap of the race at 35.105. He went purple, and that means Potashka, unless something freak happens, nobody's catching him as he's opened up that gap to four and a half seconds over Bobby Zelensky. Meanwhile, the battle rages on. David Williams right in the tire tracks of Eric Blix. Blix's gonna overshoot, I think, Jukau just a little bit. Williams is gonna be right with him yet again here. As they head back turns that towards that uh, sun ass co uh, complex here. Blix has not been great through there. Let's see what Williams can do. Will he dive it to the inside? What's gonna be the play here for the driver out of VRS? He'll, he'll maybe just show his nose going into one, but I don't see him making a move at this point. He just wasn't close enough. He didn't get the best run out of Junkau. You can see Blix just sliding that truck. That's compromised his entry through turn two. And then Kevin Dassault, the left-hander here. Both drivers pitted on the same lap. So it's how well they've used those tyres, those Goodyear Eagles. And here comes Williams then, looking to the inside. Is he going to actually make the move stick? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He got a fantastic run oh. through Kervin de Sol. Now he goes off, and the battle continues. Crossover move. Eric Blix able to get the run back by David Williams. Williams had it all won, and he all threw it away on the corner exit, but not over yet, as he has the inside line as we head into the complex. Oh, there was a little bit of a bump there as well on Blix. He's taking the wide entry. He wants to try and get a cut back here somewhere, but that truck, that Lampo's truck, just like his teammates, been looking a little loose as there he gets on the loud pedal and uh, Trey pushing hard, locking up his inside tyre. He's trying everything he can to get back at David Williams, but I think Williams has just got too much pace here and he's pulling away already from Eric Blitz. Yeah, Cotovello down the hill now towards Juncao and just like that, back up the hill here but funny quick story here is the fact that the track map I'm looking for comes from the Autosport Atlas for F1 from the year 2000. And yet the track still, the track map still helps me out, Paul, because they haven't really changed this track much in, uh, oh, about 19 years. No, but why should you change this track? It's a classic track. It's produced great racing. Uh, if you really want to see how crazy the, the track was before, back in the 70s, you want to have a look at that because that was, that was just pure out and out speed was that track. Uh, but yeah, these guys are not giving it up yet. Blix is still within such a, oh, no, I was going to say within such a distance, but he's lost about a tenth of a second through Curva de Solvaz. So but Williams now looking a little bit more secure in that fifth place, but he's got a long way now. 3.9 seconds to Thomas O'Leary, so I think with six to go, this will be about the limit of where David Williams could get to. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I don't think Williams is going to have enough overpace here to change anything else. I just don't think he's fast, but he's not that fast to the point, Paul, to where you can make up a gap like that because you he's still worrying about Eric Blix. Blix is still very much there. He's still very much in a defensive mode trying to drive away. So until you kind of shake that feeling as they head through Cotovello once again, I don't think Williams is going to be in a position to catch O'Leary unless O'Leary makes a bit of an uh-oh on the racetrack and then then you throw that all out the window. But basically all of these drivers at this point kind of content, kind of stuck where they're running. I will say one battle that continues to rage on. How about that ninth place spot, Chris Burnell and Aaron Smith too. Yeah, Aaron Smith though, making a little mistake 
as he's heading down into Junkau once again. This is going to give Pennell the opportunity to get the run out of Junkau. Oh, runs wide as Aaron Smith the second. And this is an ideal opportunity for Pennell now in that draft up under the tailgate of that truck. So Toyota's going to cross the line. And it's going to be on the brakes. Who's the last of the late breakers? Onto the brakes then. Smith around the outside. He can hold it there if you want to. But I think Smith playing the sensible game there. I think he'll pick up some points in this first round and go on into the next round with uh, a good score. A quick word from uh, the driver who's lo who's uh, fallen out of the race today. Uh, Steven Dager just let us know that he uh, he uh, said, sorry for my embarrassing run. I won't come without a setup next week if I can make it into the field, that is, next week. And uh, fortunately, Steven just not finding a whole lot of speed here, Paul. And this is such a tough track to set up for because, like you said at the top of the show, it's it's different. Half the track is a lot similar to a racetrack like Mexico City to where it's wide open spaces, very fast turns, and then you get into this complex starting with Ferradura and kind of ending with Jun Cao where it's a lot of tight uh, it, camber in, camber out hairpins, and it's very different. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, luckily for uh, Steven as well as uh, the, uh, the 92 just locked up a tyre there. But luckily for him, we're not here next week. It's going to be a couple of weeks, so he's got plenty of time to get some practice. In. And it was Philip Island, I believe, was the next round of the championship yes, from memory. So uh, it's a great circuit. That's not a tricky circuit. So uh, plenty of time to get some uh, practicing around there and hopefully uh, give a good showing for himself. But we're on board with Aaron Smith the second. And uh, he's got to be careful here because he doesn't want Pennell to pull away too much. He wants to keep battling here. We've got four to go. But. On the same front, he's also got battle, he's got pressure from behind as uh, Paul Slav Slavovic is, uh, is battling and he's uh, he's got the opportunity to maybe gain another position on Aaron Smith. The second who runs really wide. Yeah, Aaron Smith uh, take, took a little bit of a scenic route coming through Curva del Sol and onto the straightaways they head into Decido de Largo here but uh, Smith gonna lose kind of go anti-apex there kind of came off the corner a little bit too far now he's got to get back in line because Slavonek is right on the rear quarter panel of the 88 can he make anything happen or the 70 rather is he gonna be able to make anything happen probably not here unless a little bit of contact but you talk about pressure Paul you know where you can find out the pressure of where you're living? How about AccuWeather? Weather forecasts local to international, world-class weather radar, plus up-to-the-minute weather reports and current conditions. If you want to check them out, www.accuweather.com. They'll tell you what the pressure is in your local area. Oh, now I see. That's why they pay you the big bucks. <laughs> that was a smooth segue. I will give you that. Um, yeah, it's great to have a partner like AccuWeather in for the series this year and uh, I'll tell you what it's going to be an interesting partnership as that and the interesting partnership going on here is the well, not so much in terms of team but in terms of battling on track it's still going on 10th and 11th Smith just seems to be struggling a little bit with those tyres there's a lap on the tyres of uh, the 88 behind but the 88 just not able to get close enough to make any moves thus far yeah, and uh, Slavonik right now, like you said, just kind of in the tire tracks here, waiting and biding his time. You still have about three laps to go as Dallas Potaska, meanwhile, just to put in perspective how far out in front he is, he just went through uh, Cotavello's coming down the hill into, uh, no, actually, no, now he's going into Cotavello, got a little bit lost there as he comes through the really sharp hairpin there. That's where your leader is right now, Bobby Zelensky. He just left the hairpin. Bobby Zelensky still not there, still not there. Now is the uh, difference between the leaders there as we continue oh. to watch this battle. Smith, nope, down to the inside. Paul Slavonik's going to be able to, the Skull Candy uh, Mishimoto Chevrolet is going to dive to the inside. Can he hold it? Yes, he can. Yeah, he is. And uh, great little move there. In Ferradura, not the easiest place to make a move as well. So really decisive, made the move, made it stick, and that's what counts. And uh, just to point out, reiterate the point you're making, 
about our leader. There he is, he's going into turn two on our track map, whereas this battle is just coming into Junkau, which is turn 13 on this track. So uh, the leader quite a ways ahead of this battle. 33 seconds ahead, in fact. Yeah, he is uh, way out in front and about five and a half seconds over Bobby Zelensky as they took two to go this time. Dallas Bataska making this track uh, his playground right now as he continues to lead out front. But we stay with that battle. Aaron Smith still trying to do everything he can to track down that gap, but Paul Slavodic wants nothing to do with him. He just wants to get up there and battle at 92. They have enough time to do so here with about a lap and three quarters here as they head out of Curva del Sol onto the state straight away here for the penultimate time. Yeah, and uh, time is running out, but uh, one little mistake and things can change here. We've seen it happen a couple of times in this race, but uh, everything's just, uh, just settling down a little bit now. Aaron Smith still trying to put the pressure on here into Ferradura once again. Really, uh, close enough to make it effective for the time being. And, uh, well heading towards the white flag of this race and uh, Dallas Tasca, what a performance we barely showed him on this broadcast he's just driven away from the front yeah the driver out of the JRT stable has done fantastic as he'll come across to take the white flag this time in the background just a speck in the distance right now is Bobby Zelensky. You saw him just, no, you didn't even see him on your screen. He's that far back. And that is odd for us to see as Bobby Zelensky has owned this series in the past, but this year it's all Dallas Pataska and that entire Radicals online team right now running ruckshot around Interlagos as he heads down the straight right now, try heading into uh, Decida de Lago for the final time here. One quick battle here. The teammates starting to close up. Sven Kamerts, Thomas O'Leary, the other Radicals online drivers, as uh, they start to slow down and head into Decida de Lago as well. Yeah, Radicals online turn racing the two teammates. They, they do like to battle. I will give them that. They, they, of course, the, uh, the team manager does allow them a little bit of freedom to be able to battle. But uh, those two I think they're going to just play it safe and get a really good score for the team because I would imagine that the turn racing uh, Radicals Online entry is going to be the big scorers of the teams in this event. But uh, we're heading in towards the penultimate corner here and Dallas Potaska out the front showing us how to do it. The rookie of the day for sure, but he is not a rookie when it comes to running these races in the past. Dallas Potaska going to take his talents here to Sox Out Racing and V8 Super Trucks as he's going to come around the final corner. It's just a straight shot to the finish line with a little bit of a kink there. Hey, just don't make sure you don't uh, hit that white chalk. Now he's good. He comes across the start finish line. Dallas Potaska going to get the victory here from Interlagos. Fantastic domination by Dallas Potaska. Great stuff from Dallas there. Second place, Bobby Zelensky across the line. Then Sven Kemmerts and Thomas O'Leary pretty close together. Aaron Smith the second. He's still... Oh, that crap is wrong. There we go. Uh, he's still pretty close, but he's not going to be able to gain enough, is he? Up the hill. That draft isn't just going to quite give him enough as they're going to come across the line then. And, uh, well, there they go. Across the line. 11th. 12, uh, 10th and 11th should I say, Mark Kapal, 13 seconds behind Aaron Smith, it has not been Martin's day at all, he will be kicking himself over this result, Dennis Sola coming in in 14th, last couple of drivers, doxed out, still a second and a half ahead of Steve Sealsad. Oh, that's, Ooh, that's really the grass. The grass. That's yeah. not, you don't want to go over there. But he's going to come around the final corner. The other, uh, one of the privateers out there docking across the start-finish line. Then, of course, right behind him, Steve Steel, uh, Sealstad going to finish 15th. And then finally, Aspen Belvin, not the race he was looking for, had a little bit of a spin there early on. And uh, unfortunately, going to bring it home 16th here as he flashes across the start-finish line. So, well, there's your field right there. It makes it nice and easy for us because we just ran through them all. So what we're going to do is take a moment to step aside. We'll talk to the guys on the podium here, right here from Autodromo Jose Carlos Pace. It's round number one of the V8 Super Truck World Series Championship. We'll be right back right here on RaceBot TV. This to the front bumper, and he hits him again now. Ray Alfala into the 
outside wall. Get him past nearly three cars down that front straightaway, and he's gonna get them all done with. What a amazing lead! In the inside goes Logan Cloudman is gonna touch in. Impress! He saved it. What a save! Look to the outside as Bronke goes off. De Jong into second place. Going for the switch back. Oh, pinpoint driving. He's howling oh. down to the inside. I tried this contact though. That's why I left the ring track. Chris Leonard drives it back down underneath and he takes that second spot right back. Joker and goes to Garrett Lowe. Garrett Lowe should take victory with all that contact. He's going to try and make the move around the outside of the Parabolka. That's not going to work, but he's going to try and get the cut back here. Get the run out the Parabolka. That's beautifully done there. Back to Shuba. Back live here, high above the uh, Atadromo Jose Carlos Pace, also known as Interlagos, here as we begin the post-race show here for the Sox Out Racing V8 Super Truck World Championship right here on Racebot TV and Twitch.tv slash Sox Out Racing. First, what we're going to do before we talk to the drivers, let's run you through your full race results here for this 20-lap feature event, 24-lap feature event. 
Dallas Potaska was able to bring home the victory. Bobby Zelensky going to finish second. Third to Thomas O'Leary. Fourth to Sven Kamertz. David Williams, the hard charger, going to finish fifth. Eric Blixt is going to finish sixth. Seventh to James King. Michael Skurlock is going to finish eighth. Ninth to Chris Burnell. And Paul Slavinick is going to finish out your top ten. Then 11th is going to be Aaron Smith the second. Martin Kapal going to finish 12th. 13th to Danny Solo. 14th to Doc Stout. Steve Sealstad is going to finish 15th. 16th to Aspen Velvin. Steven Dager running into engine issues early. will finish and round out your field in 17th. But we are going to head down to victory lane. And what I'm going to do, I'll pass the mic down to Paul Smith, who's caught up with the guy who brought home the victory. It's Dallas Potaska, and he's with Paul Smith. Yeah, absolutely. Race winner then, Dallas Potaska. Not a bad de debut into the series. Just uh, you've not really got a lot to say about that race because you started on pole and drove away from everyone. Yeah, I got to thank my teammates Sven and Thomas and Marco who wasn't here uh, for helping out on the on the truck and the set and everything throughout the week. Uh, not only is this my first race in SOR, this is also my first race in a truck on a road course. Period. So. That was it was very interesting when I first started testing here, but um, I, I mean at the end of the day I I'll take it. Um, it's it's a great confidence booster to build on, and especially when you can compete with a guy like Bobby who who does this at the pro level on multiple disciplines. Well, that's it. He, as you say, does it at the pro level on multiple levels. He is also a um... A, a veteran of this series as well, former champion, to be able to beat him by 6.2 seconds, that must be a real sort of high to, to leave the first round on uh, here with a, a tricky track as well. Yeah, I was I was taken aback by how well these trucks get around a road course. I, I mean, it's... I think GT cars go around here three or four seconds quicker, which, I mean, that's, that's insanely close for a, a NASCAR around any type of road course so um yeah it's it's definitely a tricky course there's a lot of corners that you don't really know what you're going to get until you go through it so it makes it very hard but um I, I put everything together and executed and i think that's bobby seemed to have some consistency troubles every third or fourth lap and i'd be able to capitalize on it so do that a couple times and get the right line through the corner and it all ended up well well, I mean, you got the hat trick today. Pole position, fastest lap and race win. Uh, yeah. Moving on to the next round. The next round's at Phillip Island. Another difficult track. But, um, you know, what's your thoughts going into the next round? Are you just taking it a race-by-race -race basis for this season? Oh, very much. Um, I, my experience in these is very low, so I'm relying a lot on uh, Sven and my other Radicals teammates for uh, kind of helping me and showing me the way. And then once I kind of get the, the baseline, uh, race line down for each track, I'll kind of go my own way and make the adjustments to my driving style, um, similar to what I did here. Uh, Phillip Island, I've I've never actually driven the track, so it's going to be an interesting few weeks until that race, but um, I, I got no doubts that I can do the same thing here as long as I put in the same work. Well, you're going to enjoy the track, as I know I do. But uh, before we let you go then, anyone you want to give a mention to, any sponsors to uh, mention whilst you're here? Yeah, for sure. I'd like to thank all the Radical sponsors, Turn Racing, Cranfield Simulation, JRT, Six Sideways, and a lot of the other sponsors that um, quite the list we have. So just like to thank all those guys. Thanks, Rob, for bringing me on a few months ago. Um, of course, all my teammates, Marco, Sven, all those guys for helping me get the truck ready for this race. Well, there you go. Debutant and race winner, Dallas Potaska. Thank you very much for joining us. Over to you, Cisco. Thanks, guys. That's Dallas Potaska who brings home the victory. We'll talk to the guy who finished second. Well, actually, let me see if the... Yep, there he is. I was looking for his name, and there it is. Bobby Zelensky brings it home second, and... Well, Bobby, once a time, once upon a time, one year ago, you owned this place, and now this new kid comes in town and knocks you off the top of the podium, dude. I mean, come on, you're gonna go after him next week, right? Or next time? I'm, I'm taking a, a relaxed approach to this season. I got too damn many series to keep up with nowadays that I just want to come in here and have fun. You know, I I, I can't prepare like I I, I once did. Um, I mean, I, I guess talking about a year ago. Uh, didn't have the best qualifying today either. So once uh, once I eventually got by Sven um, in a messy way, I 
I didn't really have uh, pace and tires and all that to catch up. But yeah, man. I mean, you know, you can't. You know, I I, I wasn't really expecting to come out here and win today. I was just I wanted a good finish, just to have some fun. Well, I'll tell you what, looked like you had a lot of fun out there. Talk to us about kind of the track changes, because this is the first time that we've run this series with the dynamic surface, the dynamic change in day, as well as the skies. What was what were the added challenges that that brought to your race tonight? Mainly qualifying, because um, it's pretty random with how the clouds go, and uh, when qualifying started, uh, it was basically overcast, really, really cold track, and... Um, Basically, it heated up really quick, and Dallas and Sven went out immediately, and the track never got even close to being that cool, within 10 degrees of being that cool again. So from from what I noticed that, just sitting there and seeing it just rise after about two minutes, I was like, well, I ain't going to get the pole today. So the biggest difference is qualifying. I think like it's all about who, you know, of the top fast guys, whoever gets the clouds the best um, and gets the coolest track is going to wind up, you know, getting the pole or getting really close to it. Uh, so that's the biggest difference in the race. It, I mean, it's the same for everybody. So there's no like advantages here or there. Um, but it can mess you up if it gets really sunny all of a sudden and you go into the braking zone and you could overshoot it. Um, other than that, it's just a little more slick. Uh, you know, you lose grip when it gets hotter. But uh, yeah, it's mainly qualifying. All right. Well, Bobby, we got Phillip Island coming up. Uh, here on the 16th, so definitely looking forward to that. But we know it's been a busy, busy, busy off season for you, and you got plenty of people behind the scenes now making it happen. So tell us, give us, uh, let us know who makes it happen for you and that entire team. Yeah, um, you know, shout out to everybody at Coanda, you know, virtual racing school on the car as well. Um, yeah, everyone that sucks out racing for for putting the series on. Like I said, I'm. I kind of am forced to take a more relaxed approach with preparation for this series now. Just, I mean, I was just doing the Porsche Pro Series like three hours ago, and last night I was doing a bunch of testing for Vegas it's peak race this Tuesday. So, uh, appreciate the league. It's fun. Um, you know, great job to Dallas. I, he, I mean, he did a great job. You know, you, you you put in the work and you see what happens. You know, when he goes out there and wins, and, and he did a great job. So, I'll shout out to him. Of course, I got shout out my teammate Dave. He came from like last and finished fifth. That was pretty cool. And then obviously thanks to the rest of our Coenda sponsors, and we're in design, Simquip, Racebot, and JRT. Well, that's Bobby Zelensky. You can watch him race Tuesdays in that JGR machine, but today finishes second here in the Coanda Colors. Bobby, congrats, and uh we'll see you on the sixteenth. Thank you. That's Bobby Zelensky. I'll pass the mic back over to Paul Smith, who's caught up with the guy who finished third. That's Thomas O'Leary. Yeah, um, I don't know how that happened, really, but uh, the other two of yourself, Thomas and Sven, you'd been uh, battling with each other for the majority of that race. Uh, just talk us through that, because really, it'd been Sven who'd been in front of you pretty much all the way. Yeah, I was a bit surprised that I did finish ahead of Sven. I mean, Sven had the pace all week, um, and at the start of the race, he was definitely quicker. Uh, but I don't know whether him battling with Bobby had affected his tires or maybe the damage from the contact that may have affected his car but i seemed quicker um at the end of the first stint and then in the second stint i think i just conserved my tires better so i had more pace towards the end uh, well it must be good that uh, rob cuss allows you guys to uh, to battle away as teammates but still really solid result for the team the uh, turn racing radicals online team uh, you must be uh, looking forward to this season, a full season for yourself as well. Yeah, no, I'm definitely looking forward to it. It's definitely a good result for us too, with Dallas obviously winning and being a long way ahead. Um, so that shows his pace in this car. Um, so I think it's just the rest of us going to have to try and find some speed to keep up with him. Absolutely. So, uh, Philip Island, what are your thoughts? It's a, it's a tricky track, enough of a tricky one, it should be said. Uh, but it's one that's got plenty of opportunities as well. Oh, definitely. It's one of my favorite tracks, and with the layout, it should be quite simple, but I think in the truck, it's going to be quite tricky. Um, so we'll have to see how the practice goes for that one. Well, before we let you go away, podium finish for yourself. Uh, anyone you want to give a quick mention to before you go? Well, just you guys in the commentary booth and race bot with the broadcast, um, radicals for the setup work, particularly Sven and Dallas. 
Um, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Okay, well, thanks very much for joining us, Thomas, and uh, all the best for the next round. Thank you, and you. It's Thomas O'Leary who finishes third. We'll catch up with the final driver here who's waiting for us to talk to, and it's Sven Kaberts. And, well, Sven, the rivalry is renewed today. We saw a little bit of it on track, a little bit of uh, argy pargy, as our friend Jake Sperry would say. Talk us through that race, though. How was it out there? Uh, it was a fun race. It was uh, an interesting drive uh, with the trucks, the new dynamic weather, and the, the tires of the truck it was really a fun challenge to uh, to get it around the track. I'll tell you what, you're battling with the old rival, Bobby Zelensky. We saw the little bit of contact there, and then we saw you battling it out with your teammate who was able to just sneak in front of you there. But uh, you talk about, you know, the the challenges of driving out there on the surface. What exactly was, uh, what exactly did you find most challenging that you had to deal with out there today? Uh, tires, man. Well, it's always been tires, but uh, just the dynamic weather on top. The we can see fluctuation in track temperature of about ten degrees over two laps if uh, if there's a big cloud coming over. So it's really about adapting to it every lap and just trying to keep the pace uh, as high as possible continuously. Well, Sven, we saw you battling it out with an old rival, Bobby Zelensky. We know you and Bobby have done plenty of racing here in this series. Here, is it is it nice that now that we're back in the season, it's back to back to the day job almost, as it were. I uh, definitely looked forward to to driving again. It was uh, yeah, good fun again. Uh, first time I actually uh, fought Bobby on track for a few laps continuously. I think. Um, but so yeah, it was a lot of fun. Congratulations to Dallas, obviously, with his space. He was, uh, he definitely did uh, put in the work. He got a setup for him working, and uh, well, yeah, he he drove away as uh, as he should. Well, you have a lot of people behind the scenes over at Radicals Online Turn Racing that makes it happen. Give him a shout out. Say hi to him. Uh, yeah, first off, big uh, thank you for Thomas and Dallas for helping out, as well as Marco, who unfortunately could not uh, make it today. And uh, for the rest, yeah, big thank you to Turn Racing, uh, Pixel Dust for all the new paints. And then Cranfield, Azure Sim Race, Immortal, JRT, uh, my opinion there for facts, podcast, and six sideways. That's Sven Kamertz brings it home fourth. Here's Sven, we'll see you at Phillip Island, my friend. Right. <laughs> That's Sven Sven Kamertz, and I'll round out the drivers. Here are uh, Heart Charger David Williams, fortunately not able to uh, join us here, but nonetheless, Paul, we begin the final thoughts here, Paul. Oh, it's it's racing season because the trucks are driving on road courses, and not a lot of people would understand why why we say that. But there's a very good reason. This race proved it right there once again. Another classic SOR V8 Super Truck World Championship race to put in the book put in the books there. Yeah, absolutely. It's always fantastic racing, and and people it's 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 one of the best kept secrets in this series. I think it produces fantastic action always you always get great racing throughout the field i mean we saw here today that we we're mainly focusing on battles a little bit further down the field so it just shows how it's not just the guys at the front who can do it here it's all the way through the field great action great racing i'm looking forward to philip island in a few weeks time yeah absolutely looking forward to that i think it might be jp on the call we'll find out and uh because i know i'm gonna have some uh uh, a couple things here and there that I'll have to worry about on the real life side of things, but definitely look to be a face here in and out of this series here in 2019. But that'll wrap things up for us here from Sao Paulo. So we, of course, got to say goodbye. And to in design, of course, everybody behind the scenes who makes it happen, as well as him, everybody over at 8TVO, as well as Nick Thiessen there with the live timing. So everybody who makes it happen, Simon Grossman there, you see Mr. Aptoneer himself and Istvan Bello for the cameras as well. And of course, uh, Justin Prince, who should be picking up the series here next time out at Phillip Island. And I might make an appearance here. We'll just have to wait and see. But for everybody here, and for those of you watching on Twitch and Facebook, and for Paul Smith, Hugo Louis, Will Vince, and everybody behind the scenes at Racebot TV, and especially Paul for helping me out in the booth today, my name has been Cisco Scaramuza. Keep it off the wall, and we'll, we hope to see you around a racetrack here in the future. Until next time, good night.